One thing about the timing cover, as I mentioned, there's a few small differences whether you have a fuel pump on it or not. Uh, and there's differences as to where different parts go as far as the uh, fuel pressure gauges and things like that. But none of them have an actual effect on how it works on your car for the most part. Um, the early ones, yes, there's some differences, but that's usually if you see when it has a bolt here. But we're not going to cover that because they're so rare and nobody's ever going to really use them. If you do, if you do use it, just clean it up, take it, take it out, pull it out. It's going to have a ball and a little uh, spring on it. You just wash it up, clean it up, and back together. Mine wants to pull spring. Um, most of us are going to be using the standard oil pump cover, which has a bolt and a washer. And from Gill and Andelstein in Europe, you can get these rebuild kits. They come with a spring, washer, and most importantly, the steel ball. It's not really a ball, it's a steel plunger that goes on the end of the spring to maintain your fuel pressure. I mean, your oil pressure, not fuel pressure. Sorry about that. The, um, that's important because most of the old ones that we have now have plastic and they've worn out and you've lost, you're losing oil pressure. This almost ensures you're going to have a really good oil pressure on your motor. Um, and so with that and any good cover, that's, as long as the cover's not worn out or showing deep signs and deep grooves, you'll be okay. Now, pretty much putting the timing cover together is not very hard. The main thing is you got three pieces here. So basically you have the uh, big end and the little end. Just slide it right on there. It pops right in place. Now this normally has like a little metal clip that goes here. Um, I've taken it off and that way you can put this on. And then you just go back later and put the little clip back here. It's, it'll fly out, you're going to be hard to find them, but it, it'll be there. So that's, that's it for assembling the timing parts on the inside of the timing cover. So there's that. There's a seal, you have to put the seal in. And of course, be very careful when you put the seal in because it's got to be nice and flat. You don't want to damage anything. Um, it's good to use a little Permatex number one on the inside of this when you put it on to make sure it seals good. Other than that, the next thing is doing the oil pump. The oil pump gears, I'll show you this right here. We have basically what you want to do is when you put this gear in, you want to hear it. You want to hear a little bit and you want to feel it ride this outside of that groove a little bit. Now a lot of these will have a lot of heavy grooves in here and, and or heavy grooves on the edge of the fuel on the pumps. If you have a lot of grooves you might want to consider um, getting a different timing cover. Um, that can really lose you some oil pressure. This one, as you can see, is nice and smooth, and uh, so are the, the gears. The other one just slides in like that as well. Now, one of the tricks I do, one of the tricks I do when I'm putting the motor together is I will put gear lube, a br this break-in lube, along the shaft and on the upper part of the gears. Just a little bit like that. This primes your oil pump. So when you do this, it'll basically it'll prime your oil pump. Um, you don't have to go set in a whole bunch of oil and everything else. I mean, you're already putting all this other stuff in here. So so basically, this will help prime the oil pump during the startup cycle. Um, or even during the first crank up, it will, and you also have nice wear on your gears. Right. So then you just put it in, okay? Kind of get them to go a little bit together. You can see they're already pumping the lube, and that's when you got to get a rag and wipe this off. So the rag and a little brake clean. Wipe that off really good. and let it dry for a second. Okay, this is anaerobic gasket maker. Now, this is a trick they started doing on the 2.4 liter motors, but it works on all the Opel motors. You want better oil pressure? Lose the gasket. Bead right there. Not too much, not too little.
this tube's a little getting a little use out of it so it's a little hard to squeeze and trying to get that last bit out of it just leave it a little proud you don't have to squirt it out you want to use as little as possible so just put a gasket worth so you make your gasket and then get your bolt Put it on, just slide it in there. And tighten her down. What I do is I take a little bit of time here and put a couple of them in and let it set for a little second. Two. And then tighten it to torque. Finger tight works best first just you don't want to go too tight especially these like the the oil pumps love to seize on you or strip on you, you gotta remember this is some old metal I just remembered one small feature on this motor that I have to do differently and that's because this is a fuel injected gonna be a fuel injected motor so with a fuel injected motor it's gonna need a crank position switcher so, needs one of these. And this is a crank position sensor. It's a what? Crank position sensor. It's going to go and read the crank for the fuel injection. And so this one goes right there. Slide it in place. Then you bolt it down. that. So now the torque on this is not specified in the book but what they do specify in the book is six millimeter bolts. These are six millimeter bolts and you do 30 pound inches and what I like to do first on almost any time is actually set it below where it's supposed to be. That way you do that you get that little click like a head or anything else you kind of go in a crisscross fashion and then go back around in circle make sure I got them all all right and all right so now I'll go set it to the actual factory spec of 30 30 pound inches feet inches and now in that same kind of crisscross pattern. And the great thing about doing this this early in the motor is that you don't have to worry about having that the uh, anaerobic sealer set up because the anaerobic sealer takes a few I like to have it let at least be, be almost a day before you actually start running the motor. The anaerobic sealer works in a unique way. What it does is that it doesn't seat up and get hard until pressure is put upon it and it loses oxygen, which would basically be all the voids between the two pieces of aluminum. So everything on the outside is still gonna be damp and sticky. And it's probably good to give it a day before you put start your oil pump, I mean, start your motor on this. I mean, you don't have to. It, it says it dries and 30 minutes or so, but to be honest, I'd rather have it set and know it's good. Um, but that's it, um, pretty much for the right right now. I mean, there's other parts that have to go into the timing cover. You got to put your water pump on. You got to put your um, you got to put your timing tensioner back in. But those things don't happen until after you put the timing cover on the motor. So with that, we're done with assembling the timing cover. There is one more pad that needs to go on that comes with that kit, but this gets bolted to the front of the block, and we'll get to that in a minute when we actually bolt this to the motor. I just wanted to go over real quick 
these wonderful seven millimeter bolts. As you can see, there are many different lengths of these bolts. And the wonderful thing about these bolts is they're seven millimeter, did I mention that? Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with the bolt standards in the store, you can buy sixes, you can buy eights, you can buy tens, you can buy twelves. You really can't buy sevens and nines and elevens. So, that means these are special to Opal. You are not going to Lowe's or Fastenal to buy these bolts. You might, at Fastenal, find this one, the short one. But finding the long ones and the funny ones, no. Uh, you're going to have to call Gil or, or call one of your Opal buddies to see if they can send you some if you're missing one. That does it for doing the timing covers. In our next video, we will be doing the oil pans and the valve covers and going over the differences with those. Um, in the meantime, if you could please subscribe and uh, hit the bell there so you can get notified of my next videos, that would be great. Um, what we're going to be doing after I go over that is that that's when we're going to start going into building the motors. And um, I've got a couple of different videos from different building the different types of uh, Opal motors. So um, we'll be able to cover some of the differences between the 2.2 and the one the, between the 1.9 and the 2.2 and the 2.4 stroker motors. And uh, also I should be here building a custom 2.5 motor shortly and I'll be covering that as well in another video. Um, Anyway, that is it. I appreciate it. And again, please subscribe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week.